Welcome to week 8 of Introduction to Linguistics. This week we're going to study the process by which languages change. We call this historical linguistics. We're also going to study writing, how writing was invented, and the different types of writing systems that we have in the world. But let's start with language change. So try to think of the ways in which your English is different from the English of your parents and your grandparents, for example. It doesn't seem like there's much of a difference, but if you let time run, those differences would become larger and larger until you're no longer speaking the same language. Let's imagine we traveled back in time about a thousand years, which is about 50 generations. If we were in England, this is the English that we would find there. English. So take a moment and try to find which words in the old English can you recognize that are similar to the way we speak English. Please pause the video. I mean, probably said eh? looks a little bit like said. Um, Northmost looks like northmost. Northmona looks like Norseman. Uh, Lande kind of looks like land. Westse with a little bit of imagination can be West Sea. This letter here is called Thorn and it's pronounced like our th. So it's with the West Say. So with you can see that it could be with like along. Uh, maybe he, <laughs> but as you can see, there are similarities, but it is a very different language. And again, the separation between us and this language is about 50 generations, about a thousand years. Let's uh, not go so far back. Let's go back only about 700 years to the 1300s. This is what English looked like back then. When that appeared with a shore sorter, the drochte of March had perset to the rote and bathed every vein in switch the liquor of which vertu engendered is the floor. And there's a translation when April is sweet smelling showers, his show is sorte, has spares the, the drought of March to the root, to the rote, and bathed every vein in such liquid by the power of which the floor is created. This is from the Canterbury Tales from Geoffrey Chaucer. It was written in about 1390. And it's much easier to read. You can identify a lot of the words. April. Drochte, uh, Bathed, well, they all look very similar. They're written kind of strange and they sound different, but surely uh, it resembles a little bit more of what we speak. Let's only travel back 400 years in time to the 1600s. This is starting to look a little bit more like our English. This is the beginning of Romeo and Juliet, two households both alike in dignity in fair Verona where we lay our scene and so forth. You will understand most of this. You probably don't need a dictionary to understand it. Whereas with Old English, we could understand almost nothing. And if we keep uh, moving forward in time, by about the 1800s, this English is pretty much the same as ours. Please, sir, I want some more from Oliver Twist. So as you can see, the further separation in time you have, the more a language is going to change. For example, Old English from a thousand years ago was completely different from our English. This is a process that is natural and is unstoppable. Our English is still changing in the 21st century. And as long as it's alive, it will continue to change. Everything in life changes. Our planet itself changes. Everything that is living will have some change. Some of the changes in 21st century English are, for example, singular they, as in everybody came in their car. You wouldn't hear people saying that a hundred years ago, but now it's a fairly common structure. We have new forms of reported speech in the 21st century, for example. And so Karen goes, wow, I wish I'd been there. Karen is like, I wish I'd been there. Karen is all, I wish I'd been there. A hundred years ago, people have said, so Karen said, wow. Uh, we practically don't use whom for like to whom may I, uh, am I speaking? Everyone, every English speaker in the 21st century would say who, unless they're trying to be really pretentious. So language in English will continue to change because all living things in our world change. That is in their nature. And in 400 years in the future, English will be completely different from what it is now. Why do languages change? 
First of all, because the world around them changes and cultures influence language. All of these things are telephones. And you can see how the uh, word telephone remains the same, but the meaning changes over time. The mental prototype that you have of a phone is going to change depending on what era you live in. So words can naturally change meanings as your surrounding world um, changes. Most importantly, languages can do things that resemble um, random mutations. Maybe a sound can change here, maybe a structure can change there. And we can use these changes to try to solve a permanent tension that we have. We want the people close to us to understand us, our in-group, for example. But we want the people who are not close to us to speak differently. We want them to not understand us, our out-group. So we're going to form communities according to who we are close with and who we want to signal that is further apart. So at a micro level, this is going to play out in this played out in your high school, for example, when you and your group of friends had special words that you used with one another. And then you didn't want those damn guys at a 12th grade B to understand what you were saying. So at a very micro process, words are going to be born and are going to die out of this. And some of them will stick. And over time, all of these changes will accrete until you have a different language. A third reason why languages change is um, groups might be isolated because of geographical or social isolation. For example, if you have people living on different islands, then all of those changes are uh, going to be completely disconnected from one another. And so the changes that accumulate over time are going to lead in different directions. And so same how in the natural world you could get different species because of um, geographical isolation, you can have different languages born out of speakers not having contact with one another. So language change is a completely natural process that happens because speakers can be separated over time, but also because people want to communicate with one another. They want to signal that they belong to 12th grade A and not to 12th grade B. And that is going to lead them to invent new words, to invent new ways of saying things. Eventually, some of them will live on into the community. And all of these changes are going to make different languages. This has nothing to do with degradation, which is how most people describe language change. People say, say that, oh, the way they spoke before was the real way to speak English. Now uh, people speak terrible. And of course, this is absolutely wrong. The language is, our language is just as expressive as Old English was a thousand years ago. And we have not degraded from Old English. And this complaint is as old as time. There's a beautiful document from about the year 300 called the Appendix Provi from a guy in Rome that thought that Latin was going to the dogs, that everyone spoke terrible Latin these days. And if we don't care for our Latin, it's going to be lost forever, the good Latin. And he made this rant where he wrote how people should say things in Latin versus what they were actually saying. So he said that they should say viridis, non virdis, or auris, non oricla. And if you look at what he complained about, all of his complaints eventually became the modern words for uh, the Roman's languages. So for example, he said that the, the bad Latin was oricla, which eventually evolved into words like oreja from Spanish. The bad Latin was mesa, the good Latin was mensa. But the word that survived was this one. Is Spanish degraded Latin? Of course not. Latin and Spanish do the same thing. They communicate. Language change is natural. It is not a degradation of language. Could you please pause the video and read uh, this uh, letter from Jonathan Swift real quick? Please pause it. Yep. People have said this forever, that whenever language changes, it's corruption, and that pretenders have multiplied abuses and absurdities in English. And I'm sure you've heard th these discourses about how English is spoken by the youth. The youth mangled the language, and they don't even know how to express themselves anymore. This is stupid. Language changes because people want to have um, make social distinctions between them, and 
because of random mutations that happen over time, not because of degradation. And as you can see, um, our language is, does not contain more abuses and absurdities than the English in 1712. In summary, languages change over time because cultures change, and that leads to changes in words, because our desire to connect with our in-groups makes us invent new words, and this produces mutations in sounds and structures that eventually accrete, and because physical isolation can make changes accumulate in different directions. So eventually, English from the US sounds, starts sounding different than English from Britain, for example. Eventually, Spanish and Portuguese become different. Many people think this is degradation, but this is not true. 